Good morning, everybody. Very much welcome to this uh, class on the healing methods of Paramahansa Yoga. I would like to start with a prayer, asking uh, the beloved God to make us receptive to what uh, we are going to hear and what, to what we need to hear, perhaps. So if you can kindly follow this prayer with me. Beloved God. Beloved God. Beloved Masters of the Kriya Yoga Path. Beloved Masters of the Kriya Yoga Path. Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Babaji Krishna. Babaji Krishna. Mahasaya. Swami Sri Yukteswarji. Swami Sri Yogananda. At thy feet. At thy feet, we lay our heart, we lay our, heart our, mind, our mind, our body, our, body, our, soul. our soul. Make us receptive, Make us receptive. To, the light you want to, touch us with. to the light you want to touch us with. Open our hearts and minds. Open our, hearts and minds. Open our consciousness. Open our consciousness. To thy, light, to thy touch of light, of revealing wisdom, of, revealing wisdom, of healing presence. Of healing presence. Om. Om. <clears throat> to start, I would recommend what uh, Paramahansa Yogananda would recommend when coming from outside, from our lives, to a moment different from the busy energy that we, in fact, are leaving behind at all. And so I would recommend to tense your body with all your strength while inhaling with a double breath. And I will show you how. This is a wonderful way how to release tensions, how to release tense thoughts, tense feelings, busy energy in our mind and in our body. So, you can do it from your chair. It is like this. You inhale with double breath like this from your nose and you release them from your nose and mouth like this. I show you. You can kindly do it now. Last time. Close your eyes now and just perceive your body now. Breathe at your own rhythm and feel yourself in this moment. Feel perhaps a new dimension of peace, of calmness, of space, and just stay there in that space. This is the way to make us receptive to what we don't know yet, to what is ready for us to be known, to be experienced, but that is kept out of our awareness, of our perception, of our consciousness, because of the tensions that we usually typically live with in our minds, in our hearts, in our consciousness, and therefore in our body. And from this space, we can start to hear what Paramahansa Yogananda and all the great rishis and yogis explain, being the process at the base of all what is around us and within us, the process of creation. 
By understanding that, we touch the secret which is ruling all our life, all our actions, all our feelings, all what is happening around us and within us. And in fact, all the principles of healing that Paramahansa Yogananda came to teach are based precisely on the process of creation, which repeats itself from the moment of God's plan to create till now when we move ahead in life. And he explains, in fact, and this is the crucial process to keep in mind in order then to understand all what we will talk about in these two hours together. He says that at the moment in which God created what is the universe, what is that we call creation, in that moment it was exclusively what we call the Satchitananda, a perfect state, unmovable, unmoved, perfect state of bliss, untouchable, untouched, untouching, for reasons that we cannot know nor understand at this level of the evolution of our consciousness, he started to will the creation. And he first projected himself out of that state of perfect unmovement and bliss into thought, an idea, like an architect was first the project. He's not starting with the bricks. First he has a project. So he projected himself out of that state of pure consciousness into form of thoughts and ideas. Then from that level, he started to vibrate at grossest level in form of energy and light. Then, like in a process of descending, of vibrating at grosser and grosser levels, from the level of thought and ideas to the level of energy, then matter was manifested. So you see, it's a process, it's like an organic process, from the level of thought. The level of any this is the causal world, what we call the cause causal world. The level of energy, and this is and light, which we call the astral world, to the level of matter, which is what we call the material world, where we live with our bodies in our daily life, what we see and touch, where we move. When we understand this process, we can understand how everything else happens. Means this process is exactly the same scheme through which we move in life, but we don't know. Through which we have built what we are now, result of a very, very long history, certainly not of the first 29 years of our life, if we are 29 years old, but maybe 29,000 lifetimes of 2,900,000 lifetimes. So that same scheme is what not only built us in what we are now, but keeps on creating our state of consciousness and our outer life, knowingly or not. Unknowing. So the whole body of teachings on healing is based exactly on this awareness that what we think we become, that what we think gets materialized, that thoughts are things. These are the words of Paramahansa. So when we realize such a truth, it is magnificent and scary at the same time. Because suddenly 
we wake up and we realize, what am I thinking every day? What am I thinking now? But also it's marvelous because we realize that if it is true that what we think we become, if there is something that we have become or that our life has become that we don't like, that is harming us, that is painful, that is uncomfortable, that is devastating perhaps, we can change it. Working on, not on that level, becoming upset or perhaps furious or tremendously depressed or very angry against that uncle who did that thing. But we reverse the process. We know that we can start to work on our thoughts. So, if we are aware that what we have become, we don't like it. If we are aware that what our life has become, then we don't like it. Because for any reason, we don't like it. We can start to work, to take responsibility. This is a big word. We start to take responsibility because we know that we can do something at the level of our thoughts. The methods we will explore today that Paramahansa Yogananda taught are exactly methods to work on our thoughts successfully. Because the way he told us and he taught us to work on our thoughts are ways which act from the level of creation, from that causal plan, because they imply, and this is the magnificence of these teachings, given by an avatar by Paramahansa Yudhava, they imply putting ourselves in direct contact with the first creative power, which is God. Which innumerable times, Paramahansa Yogananda in his teachings calls light. So we, you will see, we will see together, that we will work with the light, with the light of God. The light is one of the eight manifestations of God. The ancient scriptures of India tell us. You will see how many times he talks about the light, meaning with that God, meaning with that the creative power. So, if you can follow till here, you can see that once we unite through these methods with that light, with the presence of God, as creator, we become creators. You understand the process? Creators of what? We don't need to materialize objects, although that is one of the ways that, that they happen actually, but that is not the point. We can materialize a new mind. We can materialize a new emotional state. We can materialize a new life. One of the kind persons sitting here who called us yesterday from the Times of India advertisement said, so we can attract positive things? Is it so that we can attract positive things? We are positive things. Once we remember that we are that, once we remind ourselves that we are that, through the methods we will study, we will necessarily manifest a positive life. We will necessarily start to vibrate with positive vibrations, which out of the law of magnetism will start to attract not only positive things, a life which is an affirmation of positivity. People will start to change around us. Either they will disappear or then Negativity will disappear. And with negativity we need many things that Yogananda explains in beautiful words that we all recognize out of our daily fight with ourselves. 
why attending a healing class? Because we all met the discomfort, the supreme uncomfortable state, or maybe supremely painful, of dealing with our melancholy, with our discontent, with our lack of peace, with our lack of calmness, lack of poise, with our gossiping nature, which is so disturbing the energy around us, with our discontentment with life as it is, with our anger, with our nervousness, and with all the physical consequences of those, with our bad luck in business, with our incapacity to get out of a depression which after that episode never left us, with our failure in financial issues, all these are the consequences of thoughts which Yogananda says are impressed in our brain cells as grooves, sometimes in the long history of the evolution of our consciousness. We have reacted to things in ways which have created emotions or thoughts which then have ingrained, carved grooves in our brain cells. The neuroscience, in fact, have discovered that neurons in the brain, they get connected one synapse after the other in lines which are corresponding to emotions, which are corresponding to, to some recurrent thoughts, either happy thoughts or negative thoughts. And this is what Yogananda was explaining when he was saying there are grooves in your brain cells. We can work on those grooves. He firmly explains that there is no situation of depression, no tendency to negativity, no tendency to any dark thoughts in our life that cannot be erased once you bring the light in. And in fact, we're going to work with the light, as I was telling you before. So, the first method that we are going to explore together, because we could talk theoretically in really beautiful classes, but we have only two hours. Usually in Ananda in America or in Ananda in Europe, we teach these teachings on healing in five days because we have retreat facilities there. Here we don't. So we are trying to do either two classes or in this case one class where we try just to go to the essence of it, which is the scheme I gave you at the beginning, and then working directly with the methods. But first of all, I would like to know if what we have shared so far is clear to you or not. If you have questions, it's better we discuss about it now and then we can proceed. Either here or through the net. Actually, I want to welcome the dear friends who have joined us. I know there is a dear friend from Gualio. I'm very happy to know that you are there. God bless you. And other friends. So please, if you have questions, please ask or we can continue. Yes. Uh, since you told us this is a five-day a practice where you can actually master or you can at least say attempt to uh, do healings and correct yourself. Uh, what is that we, if you can guide us after the workshop? After the workshop we will talk about yeah, it. That, what is that we can continue There are to many learn. other classes yeah. that I will tell you but instead of being five days we need to spread them along the year. We will talk about that. Anyway, apparently everything This is God. This is the creation. Would you like me to repeat that process? Yes, absolutely. That is the crucial process to keep in mind. At the beginning, at the beginning, before the beginning, in the state of out of space and out of time, God was just Himself. We are talking with human terms. You understand the inadequacy of it, but this is what we have. 
He was the pure state of Satchidananda, means pure bliss, ever new bliss, perfect and pure absolute existence, untouchable, untouched, unmovable, unmoved, not changing. For reasons that we don't know, at the level of evolution in which we are, we cannot know why, at a certain point, he decided to create the creation. We don't know. We will know it when we will become him again, and at that point we will not have questions. But, at a certain point, he projected himself out of himself in the form of certain ideas, like an architect, who at a certain point has the inspiration for reasons, again, that we don't know, to create a beautiful building in MG Road, First, he has to have that idea, isn't it? We all agree. Then how will he manifest it on the material plan? It means with the bricks, uh, with, the, um, with the windows, with the doors and everything. Just thinking about it? No. He will have to put energy. And putting energy means many things, isn't it? At that point, after the idea, by putting energy, he manifests his plan into matter. That scheme is the same scheme which rules all our lives. Knowing or unknowingly means that what we think we become. What we think our life becomes. If we don't like something within ourselves which is disturbing us. Or if there is something we don't like in the life around us that we have created actually, we can change not by changing that life with often upset feelings or giving the guilt to that person or that other person or my economical situation or the world economy or my family emotional issues. I take responsibility because I know that this is the result of my thought and ideas. And I go back to that level and I work on that level at that level. Not only of the ideas of Gini 2015 or of Vivek Sharma today, 22 November, 22nd of November 2015, no? We go to a level which is where the thoughts and ideas of what today is Vivek Sharma have been built in hundreds of incarnations, thousands, hundreds of thousands, alas, millions. Is it clear? That's why, and here we get to the point, Paramahansa Yogananda called the method that we are going to say now in practice, superconscious healing method, which is the one you found in the Times of India advertisement. Superconscious healing method. Why? Why he called it superconscious? <coughs> because we want to work at that level of which we, we are not aware, we, we are aware of what is your name? Kamal. Kamal. <laughs> Kamal is aware of the thoughts and ideas, perhaps, that he has now, perhaps. Because many, he, he does, he cannot. And he wonders why this happened. You remember Akashi were wondering a uh, time ago, why this is happening to me all the time? He is not aware of what, he, but there is an energetical field produced by thoughts emotions which are acting as energetical fields in his consciousness since who knows how long, but they are there. Yogananda says, count as grooved in his brain sense. So Yogananda teaches us how to work on that level by contacting our superconsciousness, which is our higher self, which is the expression of God within us which is the higher expression of God within us. It's the highest aspect of ourselves, which is God. Is it clear? You have a question, yes? You always mention the word 
If you can kindly talk loudly, because I have a microphone, but you don't. <laughs> I'm saying 29 because I'm watching this kind lady and perhaps she's 29. The two hours will be all about that. These two hours will be all about that. So we are going now, one step after the other, to see how we can do. So, superconscious healing method. How does it work and how is it made up? We are going to teach now several methods which are going to work exactly on that level where those imprints, those blueprints there, have created the negativity which is disturbing us which have created the situation which are disturbing us. We are going to teach now those methods and practicing them together. Those will give the answer to your question. So, he says, he says, first of all, the basic, which is highly recommended for all the changes that we want to bring in our life, is meditation. This is a matter of fact. It will be not by remaining in the same level of dealing with life at a conscious level that we will change our life. The changes then need to be settled, need to be firmly established. And how to do if we continue to have the same life that we've been having for the last 29 years, and <coughs> 29,000 incarnations, you understand, no? So meditation is the crucial basis of all healing. Highly recommended for you if you already don't have a practice of meditation to learn it. But the basic is use, as we said at the beginning, sit with your spine straight, close your eyes, keep your hands on your thighs with the palms up, and don't touch the back of the chair with your back. Keep the chin parallel to the floor, your feet on the floor, and your palms at the conjunction between the thighs and your body. And then gently gaze at the point between the eyebrows and breathe, following your breath as it comes. As it comes. Don't force it. Let it flow at his song rhythm. Once you do this, you start to enter into a dimension of peace. Although your mind will run away many times, you bring it back. You will enter into a state of peace, which is the reconnection with that part of yourself which is your higher self, which is the presence of God within you, which has all the solutions, because it is the solution, and will start to suggest you, not at a conscious level, it's not a discussion, it's not a philosophical discussion, it's not a contract, it is an osmotic change which happens within you. It is an energetical transformation which happens out of the contact with that level of consciousness, which is in fact the divine presence within you that we call superconsciousness. Meditation is the first crucial method to get in touch with that level which has the solutions because it's the solutions and has the power, the intelligence and the power to work within you, to transform you. Why? You can kindly open your eyes again in order to be attentive also on a conscious level to what we are saying, which is, Paramahansa Yogananda explains that when we meditate, the mind withdraws and withdraws the life force 
from the muscles, from the nerves, and concentrates it on the brain, in the brain. The mind withdraws. And withdrawing calls back the life force from the nerves, from the muscles, and concentrates on the brain. The life force, you can understand, is concentrated in the brain, has the intelligence to identify those grooves about which we were talking, which are the results of all those emotions and thoughts which have created the life that perhaps we don't want anymore in that form, or that attitude we don't want anymore, or that physical situation that we don't want anymore, all the origin is there in those groups. Well, that life was withdrawn from the muscles and the tissues, from the mind which is withdrawn, concentrated on the brain, has the intelligence to identify those grooves which are at the origin of all the situations we don't want, and has the power to destroy them, to dissolve them. Not only. And this is even more beautiful. It has the power to what we were talking about before. What do we become in all these processes? Creators. It has the power to create, to replace those groups with new mental programs. <coughs> According to what that intelligence know, knows we need. So, in cases of nervousness, of tendency to upset feelings, tendency to perennial confusion in our life, tendency to recur again and again into those obsessive thoughts that never leave us. That life was withdrawn in our brain, has the intelligence to identify those groups, has the power to dissolve them, and has the intelligent power to know which new programs put in, which are peace, for instance, for a very nervous person, clarity, for instance, for an unclear person, contentment for those perennial discontent people, and so on and so forth. New excitement of our life force if we are tendentially depressed. That, in, that life force knows, that life force is, Yogananda says, the cosmic consciousness of God within us, taking the form of life force, sustaining us beyond the food we eat, beyond the running exercises, life force. Still intelligent like God, still powerful my like God, still with all the creative powers of God. Isn't this marvelous? So, meditation. First key towards transformation. As the mind runs away a thousand times, one million thousand times, and will never stop doing it, at least for a long time, hopefully not long, very good, but usually, typically, people is like that. There is a mantra, ancient mantra that for centuries and millennia was given only to sadhus as an initiation to sannyas. Out of a wonderful dispensation in the 19th century, it was allowed by Babaji to be spread even to people with normal lives, like I assume most of us are. That mantra is Hong So, which means I am that means I am affirming again what really only I am, that, which is that cosmic consciousness, which is the presence of God, which is the creative power of God, which is the supreme source of joy, peace, light in our lives, and so on and so forth. Hong so. So when you inhale, you pronounce mentally only Hong, and when you exhale, you pronounce mentally only so. This is what will save you from the thousand times that your mind will run away. Because of noises outside, because of noises inside. 
New noises, ancient noises. How so? And this is the basis. Then we can go to a step farther. Once we are in a state of meditation where we feel that we have touched a certain peace, where we feel that we have touched a certain stillness, a new calmness, at that point we concentrate and this is the super conscious healing method that we are learning. We concentrate at the point between the eyebrows. We concentrate at the point between the eyebrows. We gather all our energy at the point between the eyebrows. And we visualize that energy transforming, then we will practice it together. Don't worry, you don't have to write, I will send you all the emails with everything. Don't distract like this, because you will miss the point. Come, close your nose. When we are in a state of a certain new peace, a certain new stillness in our meditation, we concentrate at the point between the eyebrows. We gather all our energy there, as much as we can. We are not masters yet. We are doing all we can to gather all our energy at the point between the eyebrows. And we see that energy transforming into a laser beam of blazing light. These are the words of Paramahansa Yogananda. And we shine it over our brain. And he says, instantly destroying all mental negative habits, mental negative thoughts. And you say, how do I know what negative? I know maybe one negative thought, but then, as we said, that light is a consciousness. He is the supreme conscious, is intelligent, knows all those thoughts coming from who knows when, which are still magnetically exercising their effects on you, on your life. That energy knows, that light knows. So shining that laser beam of blazing light over your brain, that light will start to identify those negative mental thoughts, negative mental attitudes, negative mental habits, which are making you miserable. And has the power to instantly destroy those, Yogananda says. So let's repeat. Once we are in a state of a certain peace and calmness in our life, we concentrate at the point between the eyebrows. We do our best to gather all our energy there, or at least we want it to gather all our energy there. And we visualize that energy. We want to visualize that energy, even if we don't see anything, but we put out our will to visualize that energy transforming into a laser beam of blazing light, and we shine it over our brain, instantly destroying all negative mental thoughts, negative mental habits. Then, we shine that light throughout all our body, sending it to places, dear friend, dear inquiry, dearest friend, sending it to that place or those places in our body which are perhaps ill, which are perhaps severely ill, which are perhaps congenital ill. We send it there. That intelligent light, that intelligent consciousness, that intelligent power will know what to do with that. And we see that light, even if we don't see anything, we want to see that light, we imagine that light. The strong Yogananda says, the disease cells, and replacing them with new healthy cells. 
Is this valid only for physical diseases? No. Broken heart. A broken heart, out of a grief, out of a separation, out of a death, out of a financial collapse, out of the end times that our son has behaved in an improper way. Grief, sorrow, pain in our heart, separation in our heart. That light can be sent there. It will be not a work on the cells on a physical level, it will be a work on a magnetic level. It will be a work on the consciousness manifested in that grief in our heart. So I can send that light from that point after having seen the laser beam of blazing light shining in my brain and destroying the grooves of, of negative mental thoughts and negative mental habits, I shine it if I know that I have a pain in my heart. I shine it there. With the strong, clear intention to have my pain dissolved by the power of the mind. Is it clear? Yes, Carl. If we have to eradicate bad habits, then uh, where we should focus, heart or mind? Say, say again, if we, have, if we have to eradicate bad habits. Then where we should focus, on brain or heart? In this case, we are sending that light directly over our brain. It says precisely. Shine that laser beam of blazing light over your brain, instantly destroying negative mental thoughts, negative mental habits. So that it will shine it over your brain. I will say another method right after asking if people have questions about this superconscious healing method that we are going to practice right now together. But I want that you have it clear before <coughs> practicing it together. Yes, please. If you can kindly stand and talk loud because I can't. Yeah, like, uh, what you told, I have done this. Uh, what, <coughs> what I have experienced like uh, when I was young, I used to be alive for a small moment and then it again becomes dark. So do we have to practice it? Do we have to yes. This is a very important question because like I was hinting, thank you. Are you Shreya? Kanika. Kanika. Like I was hinting before, it doesn't matter if we, one, are able to, to literally be sure 100% that we are gathering all our energy here. No, it doesn't matter if we are able to see that uh, all our energy becoming a laser beam of it doesn't matter because probably you will never see it all your life. But, and here is the second crucial principle. So first the blueprint, God, how he created the world and as a, the scheme of all our life's creations. The second crucial principle is that the stronger the will, the stronger the flow of energy. So, on this principle, Swami Kriyananda, founder of Ananda, our spiritual organization within which we are teaching Paramahansa Yogananda's teachings, direct disciples of direct disciple of Paramahansa Yogananda, he said that all the teaching system of Paramahansa Yogananda is based on the principle, on the truth that the stronger the will, the stronger the flow of energy. So, in the light of this truth, why I was saying you need to want to have all your energy gathered here, and then it doesn't matter if you feel it all there, but you want out of that will as much energy as possible, and you can be sure it's, gathered, it's going to be gathered there. And as much as you will want to visualize that energy becoming, transforming into a laser beam of blazing light, as much as you want it, be sure that that much, that 
that energy will be, in fact, in truth, transformed into a blazing being, a blazing light. So the crucial aspect, the crucial ingredient, the crucial tool of all the healing methods always is the will. You need to want, first of all, you need to want to bring a change in your life. Otherwise you never have even the will to do a method. And once you do the method, you need to want what you are saying. You need to want to do what is supposed to be done. You need to want it one word after the other, one action after the other, within the method. Is it clear? Karika, is it clear? Yeah. Is it clear? Even if you don't see it, you keep on wanting that to happen. Not wanting that to see that, wanting that to happen. Right? Okay. Now, we'll practice together right now. So please, cl kindly close your eyes. Stay with your spine straight. Feel comfortable though. Don't touch the back of your chair. And let's just do again a double breathing to the tense. Again. And again. Now, let's just keep our chin parallel to the floor, our hands with palms up at the conjunction between the thighs and our body. Not on the knees, not on the knees, but at the conjunction between the thighs and the body. And then we start breathing. We start breathing with that home saw technique. Home while I inhale and saw while I exhale. Without forcing the rhythm of my breath, normally I follow the breath with home while I inhale, so while I exhale. I don't force to go slow, I don't force to go fast. I just allow my breath to breathe at its own rhythm. Once I feel a certain degree of peace, and calmness, which perhaps is not now, because we don't have the time of a long meditation, of course, but I concentrate, I focus at the point between my eyebrows. I focus my gaze there, and I want to gather all my energy there. And I want to bring to my attention something Either a constant thought, or a constant attitude, or a constant habit in my life, or a situation whose origin I don't know, but certainly which is disturbing me, or harming me, or hurting me. Maybe an obsessive thought. Maybe a painful memory I cannot get rid of. Maybe a painful emotion. Maybe a tendency of failure that I cannot understand why is there because I'm so intelligent, so learned, I studied so much, and yet unable to succeed. An arguing tendency, a conflicting way of being, litigious person, maybe I am. Maybe I find myself in, very often, in aggressive energy within me, around me. Maybe I'm very calm and quiet, but people come to me in upset moods, with strong upset words. I want to get rid of all this in my life. I don't want it anymore because it's disturbing me. Because it is making my life incapable to see the light. Whatever you know, and only you know it, is not allowing your heart, your mind to open up to light. 
light feelings, light thoughts, or thoughts of light, or feelings of light. Just now, consider that as the negative mental thought or the negative mental habit where you want to shine that light. So, we want to gather all of our energy at the point between the eyebrows. And then, we want that energy to be transformed into a laser beam of blazing light. And we shine it over our brain, willing that and knowing for sure that is instantly destroying those mental negative thoughts, mental negative habits, of which, and we go further, of which I am aware, or of which I am not aware, especially in cases of a physical disease. I want to see that laser beam of blazing light identifying within my brain those or that mental negative thoughts or mental negative habit of which I'm not aware, which is at the origin of my physical disease. Or of the accident which produced physical disease I am suffering now. I shine that light as a laser beam of blazing light over my brain, instantly destroying negative mental thoughts, negative mental habits. I'm strongly willing this to happen in perfect faith and confidence and certainty that it is happening. And then I shine that light throughout my body. If there is a place in my body which is paining, or if my heart is paining, I send that light there. And I see it destroying the disease cells out of its divine creative power and replacing those cells with new healthy cells. And if it is a heartbroken issue, I see that light wrapping my heart, entering in my heart and making light where the pain, the grief, the sorrow had established a perennial shadow or darkness. I see that light entering. And as Yogananda says, no matter how long a cave has been in darkness, bring in the light and it will be all light. That light has a healing power. It is the healing presence of God, which follows only one law, the law of love. The law is the supreme healer. It is permeating our heart, all those cells of disease, and is transforming that magnetic field into the opposite. Once now you are in that state, keep your eyes closed because I'm going to answer to common question. Bring in another method, which again invoke to please look at your spiritual eye in this state of withdrawal. You are in a withdrawal state, you are withdrawing. Watch your spiritual eye, you can understand. And affirm that the grooves of that habit that you do not want anymore are being erased now in your brain cells. 
out of your will that concentrated in the spiritual eye is in attunement, contact, active cooperation with your superconsciousness, which is the presence of God within you, which has that power to erase the grooves of that bad habits in your brain. So he says, I repeat, watch attentively, willingly, determinately in your spiritual eye and affirm that that habit is being erased in its own grooves in your brain cells. So you concentrate on your spiritual eye, you affirm that that is happening, and you want to see, even if you don't see anything, but you want ideally to see by now concentrating on your brain that this is exactly what is happening. Your strong affirmation that you want this habit to come out of your life, to get out of your life, you strongly want it, that strong will has the power to call that creative energy, one of whose aspects is the destroying capacity, the destroying, the destructive power, active power. And when you want, and this is another method, to cultivate a new, beautiful, positive habit in your life, you do the same thing. You affirm that in your spiritual life. Strongly willing it for that habit to establish in your life. Slowly, slowly, you open your eyes. Because I would like to talk on a conscious level to the fact, to the matter of fact, that we come from a long history and because we come from a very long history, we realize very humbly and realistically that perhaps one time of these methods is not enough. And in fact, Paramahansa Yogananda talks about continuity, repetition, and faith. Continued faith is an act of faith that we are doing, that all this works. We are believing that all this works and we are working with faith that all this works, but we put our energy in a continuous way, in a repeated way. So we will do it not once and that's it. How can we think something like that? Although, according to the level of power that we have developed in our life, the level of willpower that we have developed in the history of, our, of the evolution of our consciousness. For some people, one time is enough. Pramansi Yogananda, when he went to America, and they were offering him Roquefort cheese, that for Westerners is one of the gourmet foods, he, could, he felt literally to, to vomit, he says. But he would have been so unpolite with his hosts. And so he determined that he would like and love that cheese. And he said, I loved it for all my life. Then he said, well, other times when they would offer me some other strange French cheese, I thought that I had done enough with the rock for them, so I allowed myself not to try the others. But he did it. And he liked it. So you see, the power of the will of such an avatar obviously is uncomparable to what we perhaps at this point have, but we can is our birthright. I am that. I'm Rasmi, I am that. Home, so I am that. But it's a matter of reminding ourselves by constant practice. Is it clear?
clear, this is a crucial, and this is the superconscious healing method of Paramahamsa. Now, the second and third methods to erase an old habit and to affirm a new habit is part of the system of affirmations that we are going to explore in the second part of our class. First, I would like to say a very important thing. When we work with light, when we work with that laser beam of blazing light, let's keep in mind that Yogananda says that that light has an infinite power of projection. So, one crucial way to have this method working in miraculous ways, in magnificent ways, in magic ways, magic is the word that the Yogananda uses for superconsciousness, as they look like magic powers, and we can smile about it, but it's true. Remember, when you are doing that work of sending the laser beam of blazing light to your brain to destroy the mental negative habits or mental <coughs> negative thoughts or mental negative anything which is at the origin of your physical disease now, of which you are not aware, willingly say that you are sending that light to the original moment in which, in the history of evolution of your consciousness, that issue was born. Remember to be willing, consciously, to send that light as it has an infinite power of projection, means the capacity to reach a point in time and space that is not this time and is not this space, remember to send it to that point in time and space that that light being intelligent knows being at the origin of the issue. Do you understand the power of something like this? It transforms the light. It transforms your life, it transforms your life. We have seen people healing from paralysis, healing, healing from extreme griefs, and so on and so forth. And even if you don't heal, you start a process that is victorious by itself. Because you start the dismantling process of something which has been stuck there for those who are not. How much hope you can receive from something like this, isn't it? It's just magnificent. So, superconscious healing method. More questions. The stronger the will, the stronger the flow of energy. That light has an infinite power of projection. Are these concepts clear? Thoughts are things. I have created my present inner and outer conditions. I have the power to transform the outer conditions or the inner conditions by taking responsibility and working on my thoughts. Is it all clear, this? The dear friends in the internet, do they have questions, please? Yeah, so there's a question uh, from Shifali. Yes. So she is saying, uh, should I do meditation after 22 days of a major open surgery? Uh, my neurosurgeon strictly prohibited me for any breathing exercises. Don't do it, so. Shefali, don't do it. Follow what the doctor says, of course. But, my dear friend, you can absolutely. In fact, this is valid for everybody. Excuse me. In the next 40 minutes, we will touch affirmations and visualization and prayers as healing methods. You remember in the, in the advertisement, you're super conscious, you can come and check out mention to you right now. Super conscious healing method and healing affirmations and prayers. 
Je vais aller dire. Je le vois chez elle. Oui. Yes. So, when we cannot physically do something, and I want to include in the physical even meditation, because actually we are sitting, we are breathing, and you just went through a major brain operation. I know the case. Don't do it. The doctor said not to do it. Don't do it. But we can visualize. We can visualize out of the power of, of what? When we visualize something, what are we doing? We are willing for a situation which is not here to happen. Hmm? So when we visualize, we are willing for something that is not here to happen. Visualize your meditation. Visualize your meditation. Visualize yourself breathing. Visualize yourself doing hope so. And this is not just uh, fancy talking. There have been several cases of people healing from physical diseases by visualizing themselves doing the system of energization exercises that Yogananda gave as a supreme method of healing. And I will teach you one of those because we cannot explore all the 39 of those. But visualization is one of the most powerful forms and methods of healing. I will for a situation to manifest, I visualize it. I start to become a movie director in my own mind. Maybe not everybody is able to do this, so there are other methods. But visualization, Shefali, for your case, would be a great, great help. You visualize yourself doing hope so. You visualize yourself sitting in meditation. And you visualize yourself gathering all the energy here. And that you can do it because you don't need to breathe, you don't need to do anything, you don't need to see. You just visualize that you are gathering all your energy here and then definitely you can send that light to your brain and working on the destruction, the dissolution of the original thoughts or habits or whatever which has produced the accident which has then caused the brain issue which brought you to the operation. That is the work to do. Working on the dissolution of the magnetic field that you created, who knows when? Unfortunately which then has developed into the accident, which then has caused the brain issue, which then has brought to the operation. Is it clear, Shefali? Maybe she will answer. Is it clear to all of you? Yes, she's saying yes. Yes, okay, I'm glad. Very important. These cases are interesting enough for all of us because we can then learn more. Very good. So, Superconscious healing method, we have learned it. Do it at all. You can change your life. Most of all, do meditation. Once we do meditation, we start to open up to new different levels of works that you can do, we can do in ourselves. Now, I want to touch, in fact, the other crucial method of healing, of transformation, which is the method of affirmations. Yeah. Yes, please, absolutely. Uh, when you start to focus your energy on healing your issues, there are many which come uh, forth. There are many issues which come yes. forth. So, uh, do you keep on uh, visualizing one after the other? I tell you, one of the keys to healing is doing introspection. Yogananda says, the self-analysis and introspection are the basis on which then do any healing work. So you literally write down on a diary, how would I like to transform my life? How would I like to see my life different? How do I envision a life which is happier? A life which is maybe more successful, but successful in the sense that in fact it's more peaceful, it's more creative, it's more efficient, is more happy in one life. So, you write down 
you write down what are the aspects of yourself, first of all, that you see perhaps are the reasons why I am in conditions which I don't like. Then you write the outer situations which are creating disturbance to you, because both are created by your memory. Then you start to work one thing after the other with your methods. But as we were saying that these issues are the result of a very long history, it is recommendable to work on which on each at a time. Not otherwise like you know, you want to prepare a beautiful dinner. You don't put all the ingredients of all your courses, the main course, the, 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 the main course and second course and the set, you don't put all in the oven together, isn't it? Oh, first we start to prepare, no, slowly, slowly, our starter and then we prepare the first and then the second, isn't it? And that means that we first buy the ingredients, then we clean them, then we chop them, then we put them together in the right way, then we put the right salt and pepper and masala. And then we start to cook. And then we have to wait for them to cook, isn't it? Then maybe we start to work on something else. But certainly, first I have to put energy in that, isn't it? So you, so you, so you make one at a time? One at a time. One at a time. One at a time. Because it takes time. It can be instantaneously, Yogananda says, it can be, but it depends on who you are, how much willpower you have developed, how much concentration power you have developed, isn't it? Hmm? Yes, please. In one session, uh, how many times do I visualize the entire process? Stay there with the light in your brain. Stay there as much as you can. Stay there as much as you can. I can tell you one thing. In the praying methods that we will do together, we will see that Yogananda recommends a 15 minutes, a specific time, in which we are supposed to stay unmovable while doing. Uh, Jaita, if you want to come here, you can come here. Please come. Yes, okay. you don't understand. He recommends a specific time in which not moving our hands once we have done a certain healing practice of prayers, right? And that is what? 15 minutes. 15 minutes is the same time that he recommends after the practice of Kriya Yoga, which is the highest practice that he came to teach for transforming burning karma. So, if he says 15 minutes, but even if it was a different time, but a specific time of not moving, it means what? Well, that there is a new electromagnetic field that we have produced through either the healing method or the supremely healing method, which is Kriya Yoga, which we don't want to disturb in its new molecular state. Are you able to follow what I'm saying? I repeat it. Once we do these powerful healing methods, we are working on magnetic fields. Karma was like that with that habit for maybe 36,000 lifetimes. We don't know. Once he starts to do a counteracting action towards the liberation from that habit, we understand that we are working like a sculpture with a very delicate matter, though, which is an electromagnetic field. Kamal had in his brain, in his consciousness, an electromagnetic field created by that habit that in order to be dissolved needs another electromagnetic field, which one? The one of the superconsciousness, means the one of God, which, like when you put milk in the water, needs sometimes to make the water white. 
and here is not milk and water, it's something else. It is an osmotic reaction, an osmotic process that the healing power of God through the light applies on Kamal's old negative habits, magnetic field. It takes time. So I want to allow that time. So I want to remain in that visualization of the blazing light of that laser beam shining over my brain as much as I can. Without feeling guilty, though, if I can't. But dear, dear, Banat Banat Manjai, the Hiri Manjaya says. And he talks about moksha. But here are all little motions. Come on, negative habits, being free from that is a little moksha. For sure, it's a step forward to the real moksha. Is it clear now? As long as you can, as long as you can. Base yourself in that life and allow yourself to remain in that path. Since I cannot see the light, yes. I'm visualizing... Like 99.99% of yeah. the human population. So I'm visualizing the light. You are visualizing the light. And or let's say, you are willing to visualize I'm willing to visualize yes. the light. Uh, when I throw the light on my brain, and since I'm focusing over here, and this is originating light, so I have to transfer the light within the brain or from top? I tell you, Kamal, first of all we said that we want to gather all our energy into the spiritual eye, and it is that energy that we are ideally willing to transform, in, we are supposed to transform into a laser beam of blazing light. Yogananda literally says, nothing else but, shine it over your brain. He said, shine it over your brain. What does it mean? If we are here, and that light starts from here, shine it over means that from here it goes, it's not outside, you understand? From it, it goes, it starts from here, and it goes like a radar, like a radar. It is intelligent, so once you shine it over here, she knows where to go. She, I mean, again, we are using very limited human words, no? Expressions. You shine it over, but then she knows where to go. And he doesn't say anything else, but I tell you precisely these words. Gather all your energy and the spiritual life. Transform that energy into, or visualize that energy into, a laser beam of blazing light. Shine it over your brain, instantly destroy. So these are exactly his words. He doesn't say, and see the laser beam going here and there, and then want to see it burning, imagine that you're, no. Shine it over your brain, instantly destroy negative mental habits, negative mental thoughts. These are his words. But then you work with that. Like meditation. Once we become mass, once we learn a method and we start to apply it, you will see. It is like learning anything. When you learn your bicycle, to, you don't go only from here to here, you can go everywhere, you can go beautiful path, you can do anything with your bicycle once you know how to ride the bicycle. Same with these methods, you can play with them. Please forgive the word play, but you understand? Become creative. Hmm? Oh, yes, please. Uh, so this light, basically, it's nothing from the onset, it's already there. Right? This is an important question. We are constantly surrounded by what is the only thing that is, which is the cosmic consciousness. One of the manifestations of the cosmic consciousness is light. One of the ways that the cosmic consciousness manifests itself, expresses itself, is knowable, is light. Then there are others. There is power, there is love, there is joy, there is sound, there is wisdom, there is calmness, there is peace. Yogananda uses the light as the major expression of God, because that conscious cosmic energy is God, as an instrument of healing. All 
Hundes Rantas. To have life, a body needs that energy to come in, and this is what happens when the first body cell is conceived in the womb of the mother. In order to have life, you need to have that cosmic conscious energy entering that cell, that is becoming life force. So the cosmic conscious energy always around us becomes life force in the body cell, the first body cell, and remains there until you die. When you die, it's because that life force has left your body. So as that life force, I'm getting there, is nothing else but the cosmic consciousness of God. It has the same aspects, and one of these is light. Once you concentrate on the light, you are concentrated exactly, concentrating exactly on the presence of God, which has the supreme healing power. Is it clear now? And that light is within you, is the life force, but once you gather your energy here, you are concentrating on your superconsciousness, which is the highest self, which is the presence of God within you, and is located here in the frontal lobe of the brain, specifically in the point between the two eyebrows. Is it clear? Uh, excuse me. Yes, please, no, excuse me, ask. Uh, I have tried to meditate, you know, several times. Uh, by concentrate, uh, by putting my concentration on in, uh, you know, between my eyes. Yes. Every time I kind of start feeling a headache if I'm, I'm concentrating here. If I'm uh, probably concentrating. You're doing it too strong. That's why at the beginning is gently, gently, because we know that then headache can come. But she did not. Yes, that's why we say gently. <laughs> concentrate on the point of the between the eyebrows. Gently. Gently means that you can understand. You put your arm for, for, uh, with your thumb a little bit higher than, than your eyes. Like, not here. Here you become crazy. You know? <laughs> <laughs> just here, you know. So you just gently are trying to gaze at a point between the eyebrows, which is not the statue of the liberty, <laughs> but it's just the point between the eyebrows. Gently. Yes. Well, sometimes I feel that like one is tense and one is not relaxing, and then one tries to focus so that may not happen. Probably it's again first and then. That's why, dear friend, how did we start? Before anything, what did we do? We did double breathing and relax. We did that. But so many things that one cannot even remember. But there will be the video, it will be sent to you in any, in any case. Crucial, crucial. That's why we started the whole class with that. That's why we repeated it then when we started the meditation, isn't it? Crucial. We come from tensions, known and unknown, which make it impossible to focus. And even once you feel relaxed, your mind will run like a crazy horse. That's why there is the mind. These things are not, you know, fancy. These things have been, it's a science put together by the rishis, which didn't just uh, came to know because they read some, some magazine. They came to know it as a revelation from God. This is the truth and they were one with the truth. Huh? This is all here. Very good. So now, let's talk about another two. Powerful tool for transforming and therefore healing our lives. It's more beautiful to say healing our lives than saying healing from one physical disease. Because healing usually we think, no, I have to heal from uh, either a minor or, or major physical disease. But actually, actually, isn't it? No need to say anything more. But one single number. explained us that we can use words as powerful energetical bombs. These are his words. Again, I'm using only his words, but sometimes they look so majestic. And they are majestic because the power is majestic. So, 
He taught us how to use words in ways that they can become energetical vibratory bombs able to throw away, remove rocks, he says, rocks of difficulties, not all, and create new realities. Is that his words? With the right words used, uttered in the right manner, in the right rhythm, have the power to be vibratory bombs, able to dissolve rocks of difficulties and create new realities. This is the truth behind the healing system of affirmations. He explains that words are sounds occasioned by Thoughts. There you go, you go back to the thoughts. And thoughts are what? We saw it. Where do they come? They come from nothing? No, they came from God, isn't it? He had, he had his own thought. He projected himself out as a thought. Then he put will on that thought and matter came. Our thoughts can be expressed in words in order to dissolve and create. And this is the system of affirmations. So we have to be very careful what words we are using, what outer words we are using, what inner words we are using. What are we telling ourselves? What are we telling ourselves? What are we telling ourselves every day that we become? What have we told ourselves for long? centuries that we became. These great masters come to unwind. Do you say unwind? Unwind the process. Finally. Finally. So, affirmations. <coughs> affirmations are words with a strong meaning behind in a truth which is not summum truth today. It's not her reality. But she would like to see herself within herself with that new reality within her. Or she would like to see her outer reality different. I will say more. Maybe one of us is a mother. And as a son who is depressed, that mother can project that affirmation towards the son because words like that light, if it is true that their manifestation are okay, they are occasioned by words, they are okay, if it is true that they are occasioned by thoughts, then thoughts are projections of consciousness. What did you say? If light is one of the manifestations of the consciousness and that has an infinite power of projection, even words have an infinite power of projection of what? Of the truth embodied by them. Nothing else different like a radio broadcasting from Mumbai reaching at the same time Chandigarh. That power of projection. And here it's not about the sound, it's the meaning, the power of the truth behind those sounds. Is it clear how they work? Yes. So we realize that affirmations can be an extraordinary tool to transform our lives. How do we do them? How do they work? How can we reach with that power ourselves in a way that then gets really transformed? By touching all the levels of our consciousness, all the levels of that aspect of ourselves 
which create our reality. So we need to touch. The storage of our consciousness which has all the memories known or unknown to us, but still manifest in a powerful <coughs> magnetic active field within us. So touching the subconscious mind, which is the storage of memories known or unknown to us. Emotions known or unknown to us still producing reactivity in us and allowing or not allowing something to happen or not in our lives. Memories, emotions, thoughts, habits, attitudes, all those are stored in our subconscious mind. So we need to go and touch it in order to bring a new vibration able to <coughs> transform that vibratory world and create a new one, isn't it? And then we have to touch the level at which we are talking, the level of our unconscious mind, which is able to reason, is able to discuss, is able to make questions, uh, try to find solutions. And then we have to touch the highest aspect of ourselves, which is the superconscious mind, because you can understand when we arrive with the affirmation, and I will tell you how, to touch our superconscious mind, he says, a volley of energy shoots down from that level and vibrates all through our consciousness and heals. He says, electrocuting, I'm using these words again, electrocuting physical bacteria, tremendous fears, or devastating soul ignorance. Means the ignorance that we are that, with all the consequences that ignorance implies. Is it clear? So how to do to touch all these levels and become a new human? First of all, we choose out of the... What is your name? Ashutosh. Ashutosh. First, we have done our introspective work. We have done our introspective work. We have done a self-analysis work. To get clarity about what is it there that is not going. That is what, I, what is that I see that it doesn't work. And then, I try. And there are magnificent words written by Yogananda or by Swami Kriyananda, and I'll tell you which one. Beautiful books, simple that can change your life, full of affirmations where you, after having done your introspective work, can certainly, because you want to change, again, we want to change, not that you know I'm really making my house because I have nothing else to do. I want to change, so I'm going to check beautiful collections of healing affirmations transforming affirmation, liberating affirmation, written by someone who has experienced those. Being one with the creator, being the creator itself, being an avatar. And I find it, I will find it, I will find it. I choose it then, and I start to, and I tell it. First, we want to touch our subconscious mind, the famous storage, hmm? to start to discard this Things which are there, you know, like, like those parasites in the rocks, they are there. All those memories, all those habits, all those fear means fears, worries, worries, tendencies, fear tendencies, obsessive, upset reactivity. They're all there in the subconscious mind. All that is stuck since who knows how long. If I tell you, I tell you very quickly. That there are in the astral world, there are some souls which are so incapable, so attached to what they were in a certain lifetime, that they are still roaming after 5,000 years as Egyptian queens. It's unbelievable because they are all there caught in their subconscious. They can't get out. Wow. Wow. That's how we are in such miserable situations, most of us. Isn't it? Wherever we watch, it's not the Paris is within us. 
the terror is just within us. Nothing else. So, we start to touch the subconscious mind by... Um, I'm sorry. We are going to touch the subconscious mind, but first of all, Ashutosh has done his work of self-analysis, introspection with what? Not with the subconscious mind, otherwise it would have resolved, but with the conscious mind, the one at which is the level at which we are talking. So first we, we are going to touch that to start the process of un, um, to, to uncrust, I don't know how to say it. Unwind. Unwind. Right? Yes, I'm starting from the level I'm talking to you. And so we are going to choose our affirmation and we are going to say loudly. Like if I'm calling Vivekta on their can Kanika. If I say Kanika, hmm? she perhaps doesn't hear, she's busy with her infinite horses running in her mind, she can't hear. Or Kanika. Kanika. And that is the first moment I'm starting now to do what? Yogananda says I'm starting to. Arouse my consciousness from, he says, the mental stupor. Do you understand? From the mental stupor in which I was. I was like this. Roaming in life unaware. Roaming in life unaware. Banging here or here. Again and again. Kanika. So suddenly, Kanika. She has, you know, she, oh, someone is calling me, finally. So, loud voice. Then, again, to touch even deeper that conscious level, we talk at a normal volume. But now, I'm talking at a normal volume. So, we are pronouncing our affirmation loud and normal. Then, I'm going to touch the storage. To touch the storage, I talk in a whisper. And then I close my eyes and I say Kanika in silence, mentally only. Then I go with that higher gear and I'm going to bring the truth of that affirmation manifested in those words by men to the superconscious <coughs> mind, by mentally pronouncing at closed eyes that affirmation in my spiritual eye. From that moment, a volume of energy, as I was saying before, shoots down and vibrates and heals. Electrocuting whatever issue was there and creating the new reality affirmed by the words of the affirmation. Is it clear? Now we are going to do it. Nobody can remember this, obviously. We haven't done the pause because we started 15 minutes later because so many people came. Do you need a pause before we do the affirmation? It's 1.22. Can you make it to go on for 15 more minutes? Yes. 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 You need some water? We can take it to you. Someone needs water? You need water, right? We can. Do you mind? Thank you. Yes. While he goes for the water, you ask the question, but not more than two minutes. <laughs> yes, yeah, so, so, Does Vinita. Does this mean uh, that the thoughts. Talk loudly, Vinita, otherwise I can't hear you. Yeah. Thank you. The thoughts uh, which are spoken out uh, with sound have more energy than the thoughts we have with it? That we have? Like no, without sound, the thoughts. Thoughts are things. Yeah. Ninety-eight, perhaps, to be generous, percent, or to be limited, of our thoughts are untold thoughts. Right. Not only untold from Vinita to Cecilia, untold from Vinita to Vinita. Right. Some people, because there are thoughts which we are aware of, and there are thoughts which are running in our consciousness in our subconscious. 
unfortunately not visible, not hearable, but whose effects we see in our life, inner and out. In order to produce a big change, Yogananda says, even a healer has to pronounce the word. Jesus will say, raise up, open your eyes. Words needs to be expressed in order to produce a change. Although, and then I hope we get to the prayer moment, although when you have acquired a strong power, you have mastered your will. You have trained your will. A deep thought uttered in prayer towards God can produce an extraordinary change. Because it is acted in deep faith in your inner dialogue with God. But that is not a normal thought. That is a prayer. That is a thought which becomes prayer. Is it clear, Rita? We always have to watch what thoughts we are welcoming in our mind. Because as you know from your studies, Pramam Sayyidananda explains that thoughts are not coming from us, they are not rooted in us, they are universal. There are two currents of energy, two currents of consciousness, permanently running there. The consciousness of light and the consciousness of darkness at this level of duality which the earth is. They come from the other thoughts. They are only expressions either of one current or of the other, you can understand. It's up to you with what you are in tune. Yes. Uh, will be thoughts? Yes, yes. It is up to you with what you are in tune. Up to you means? What is your name? Santosh. Santosh. It means up to what Santosh has become. Her magnetic field made of a certain consciousness, which is the result of the evolution of her consciousness, attracts because vibrates in tune with one of the other current at different levels. It's not all black and white, we know it by heart. No, that's why it's crucial to transform our consciousness. Why? When we say transforming our thoughts with all the tricks that we saw, we are transforming our consciousness. That's why very clear. Tune in more and more and more and more with the only real consciousness, which is the divine cosmic consciousness of God, which is pure light. <coughs> Alright, so as we are talking so much about light, let's affirm what I uh, find the most powerful affirmation for the light. But we know it's very hard. Many, some people here who have come from other classes know it, but I like to affirm that again and again because it's at the base of all our issues. Whatever we call our issues, whatever name, whatever definition, whatever description we give to something disturbing us, there is one essential definition which makes it very clear. It is the absence of light which characterizes that issue which is disturbing us, inner or out, first. Even the lack of money is an aspect of absence of light. Is, is it clear? So that's why this affirmation of the light, to me, is all-encompassing. Do you say that? It's all-encompassing. <coughs> this is from Yogananda. I first tell you what is, and then we repeat it together. You will uh, find it in this wonderful, marvelous, little book, Scientific Healing Affirmation. Scientific Healing Affirmation, written by Yogananda. Here is all the science of affirmations. Here is all what I told you here. And, because of course I told you only what he teaches, obviously, no? All what I have been sharing here are by heart his words. So, marvelous affirmation. I am, now close your eyes just to absorb it while I say, then we, we do all the practice. I am submerged in eternal light. No, wait a minute, just let me tell you the whole affirmation and then we do it together. Now I want to tell you, you just close your eyes to, uh, to hear it uh, at, uh, at a uh, 
deeper and clearer level, then we will repeat it together. First of all, I want to, to, to pronounce it for you. I am submerged in eternal light. It permeates every particle of my being. I am living in that light. The Divine Spirit fills me within and without. Without means around me. Now, we are going to pronounce it loudly and at a normal volume to touch our conscious mind. Then we are going to pronounce it in whispering and in silence to touch our subconscious mind. And then we are going to pronounce it again in silence, watching the spiritual eye to touch the superconscious mind. So we do it together. You kindly repeat after me with the same volume, volume of voice. There is no need now to close your eyes, only when we will get to the subconscious and superconscious, and I will guide you. So, I am submerged in eternal light. I am submerged in eternal light. It permeates every particle of my being. It permeates every particle of my being. I am living in that light. I am living in that light. The Divine Spirit fills me. The Divine Spirit fills me. Within and without. Within and without. I am submerged in eternal life. I am submerged in eternal life. It permeates every particle of my being. It permeates every particle of my being. I am living in that life. I am living in that life. The divine spirit fills me within and without. The divine spirit fills me within and without. I am submerged in eternal light. I am submerged. It permeates every particle of my being. Closing our eyes, we are still touching the subconscious. Closing our eyes, mentally only, so in silence. I am submerged in eternal light. It permeates every particle of my being. I am living in that light. The Divine Spirit fills me within and without. And then, closed eyes, but watching at the point between the eyebrows, gently watching there, we pronounce in silence, mentally only, but full with power. I am submerged in eternal light. It permeates every particle of my being. I am living in that light. The Divine Spirit fills me within and without. You are supposed to repeat this, whatever affirmation you choose, many times at each of these levels. Many times repeating the same affirmation at each of these levels. Loud, normal, whispering, silent, and silent by watching your spiritual eye. The secret the guidelines to have affirmations working are, Yogananda says, faith, conviction, repetition, intensity of attention, intensity of attention, understandingly, feelingly, and willingly. After doing our introspective work, after having done our self-analysis work, we choose, we identify the issue, we choose our affirmation, and then we pronounce it in the different volumes of voice, different ways, and repeatedly at each of the levels. Understanding what it is saying, feeling it deeply within us and willing it, but with faith, with faith, that this is really working. Words acted in the right manner, like the one we just learned, Yogananda says, become like vibratory bombs able to throw away rocks of difficulties and create new realities. 
Swami Kriyananda has accompanied affirmations with prayers, like to establish at an even deeper level our work with God, our connection, our collaboration, our cooperation with God, the supreme creative power in order to bring the change. I strongly recommend you affirmations for self-healing of Swami Kriyananda. Here you will find that literally a treasure of 52 affirmations, like one every week of the, for every career, with the corresponding one explication. And second, prayer, which will make it even more complete. And you will find it for calmness, for joy, for peace, for more energy, for material success. Magnificent. We are not going to get out of whatever mess we are ourselves into, whatever. Medium level, low level, high level with our normal, what, with whatever we know, even if we are PhD at Harvard, is not at that level of social intelligence, education, that we will come out of that. It will be not just with a good attitude. All this will help, will help to practice, to practice tools which are going to touch the matter of the issue at its <coughs> root, which we have seen at energetic root. Is it clear? That's why all these are not just, these are crucial things. So, I hope the methods are clear. You will find them described perfectly well in this book. <coughs> And of course, in scientific healing affirmations by Paramahansa Yogananda and affirmation for the dreams by Swami Yogananda. Perfectly described, impossible not to understand and transform. Even only reading it transforms it. Then, after our superconscious healing method, after our affirmation in the spiritual life of habits that we want or don't want anymore. After the relaxation exercise, we have learned the affirmations to use words like rocks, like, like bombs, vibratory bombs. Then we go to the utterly finer level of working and communicating and cooperating and collaborating with the cosmic conscious energy around us, which is God. And what is that method? It's the prayer. Prayer is that intimate, it has to be that intimate dialogue with God, which Yogananda says, <coughs> when applied with faith, with devotion, with love for Him, like you would go to a love, beloved Father, Beloved, good, behaving father. You go with love, that in the case of God is devotion. You go with faith, knowing that like in the case of the prodigal son, that I'm sure even if you are not Christians, you know about it. He would never deny you. What is your right? You're right because you are redeemed, you are reawakened. And you are asking, yes, you can ask also for the new beautiful house, but I'm sure we all understand that what we are asking here when we talk about praise is a new beautiful inner house, isn't it? Which ironically, paradoxically, will produce also the beautiful house in case we still want it. Do you understand? Or need it? Yes, why not? Do you understand, no? That intimate dialogue will set up a collaboration of supreme efficiency with the Creator and will set up an ethical change in our inner and outer reality, bringing alive what our prayers, prayers are. And now you will say, she will say asking, no. It doesn't talk about asking. It talks about, Yogananda talks about demanding. 
this kind of a word that is pronounced by us when we talk about God of praise, it looks and sounds like presumptuous, arrogant, isn't it? Very ignorant also. Do not use praise, he says, Yogananda says, as a beggar. Use them as the Son of God, which is demanding his birth life. The first verse is the one to happiness. And happiness is made of all the declination of wars and conditions of the soul that we can call peace, calmness, light, joy, wisdom, power. It's that happiness which is our best life because we are that, <coughs> which we can again reclaim in our lives by demanding it to the only one who can give us. That because he is that, and by prayer we re become that because the activation of that connection through prayer again transforms us into that consciousness with which we are having that dialogue. Faith, conviction, determination, devotion, love, clarity, clear words. And again, you find the infinite prayer books. Swami, Swami Kriyananda, Paramahansa Yogananda, books that, that just, they are like, a, like a poems of love, whispers from eternity, metaphysical meditations. Even only reading, you say, yes, but I'm another person. I am another person. You find prayers here. Then you have your own prayer, which only you know again. The famous introspection work, the famous self-analysis work. Lord, this is it, this is the situation. Transform me. Transform within me what has caused this present condition. Wherever the reason lies. Accompany me towards the transformation within me of what has caused the present condition. This is when we are like this. No, I, I don't know. I don't know what is going on here. I, when we don't transform within me, and that has to be full of faith that we will do it. You can understand the power of God within you will do it. If it is clear what it is there, you can pray with clear words, right? But these are a fantastic collection of prayers. Prayers for ourselves, prayers for others. Affirmation for ourselves, sending affirmation for ours. The infinite power of projection of words, infinite power of projections of the healing presence of God activated by our affirmations or prayers. So I will leave you with two prayers. One for ourselves that we will do here and now with that attitude, total faith, determination, conviction, sincerity, love and, and devotion. And then the easiest method of prayer of Paramahansa Yogananda but I will send you via email all the four methods of prayers that he taught, which would take a class by itself. In fact, at the end of the class I will say something. Don't leave class, because I will say if you want, next Sunday we can have another class. I cancel that class because we have Kriya initiation in the afternoon and I would never want to see that some of you comes to the healing class and then doesn't have the time to come to Kriya. Kriya is the supreme healing class, the supreme healing method, because it heals us from Maya. Bars. So if you are sure that then you would go to Kriya, I don't even know how many of you are Kriya bars, but then you are going to be Kriya bars. Anyhow, we will talk later. Now, one prayer we will do together, and one method to help others will do. First, with faith, devotion, love, complete participation of the depth of our being, 
closing our eyes and possibly you can understand concentrating here with your demand concentrating here and healing hearing the answer in your heart maybe not today but by doing it and do it one day you will hear the answer you start to pray this that I love very much Close your eyes, please. Like if you are going to meet the person you love most, but seeing that love, not only from you, but reciprocated at levels which are beyond any comprehension of the human mind, and that person is actually God. And then we say a prayer, which again, like we did the affirmation for life, like all encompassing, this prayer is all encompassing, again using the word light, in order to include in light whatever we really need. I will read it to you, and while I read it, you see that these words are like, you are like sculpting in the ether your demand filled with love for God, filled of the complete, unshakable awareness and absolute conviction that he, he is hearing you, he is listening to you and he is going to answer. Father, thy unlimited and all healing power is in me. Manifest thy light through the darkness of my ignorance. Father, thy <coughs> unlimited and all healing power is in me. Manifest thy light through the darkness of my ignorance. Whenever we pronounce words like this, we are going to touch the unlimited power, capacity, intention, will of God to really answer to this kind of question of prayer. Father, thy unlimited, we are going to touch that unlimited power, not only, an unlimited power, which is all healing, says, what does it mean? All in the sense of whatever form of darkness, whatever form of absence of light within me is creating conditions within or without me which are disturbing me, hurting me, paining me. He has the power unlimited to dissolve that all forms of absence of light. And that light has the power to manifest through whatever form of darkness created by our ignoring. When we say ignorance, we are just ignoring that we are that supreme reality of perfect health, emotionally, physically, mentally, spiritually. Father, I am limited and all healing power is in me. Manifest thy light through the darkness of my ignorance. When we see there is a friend, a son, a nephew, a niece, a father, a mother, a wife, a husband, a long-time friend, a long-time relative, or the victims of Paris, their parents alive, those who remain, those who have accomplished, those who have committed terrible actions, we can pray for it. Again, knowing that what we are using in our prayers is that cosmic consciousness which out of our will we are calling within us and we are projecting out of us towards that person or towards a situation or towards a place or towards a place in time and space of which we are not aware because it works out 
of the power of infinite projection, the, that consciousness that we are calling in us for praying, has. Is it clear? So now I tell you this method, which is the easiest method of prayers of Paramahansa Yudananda. I tell you and then we do it together. And if you don't mind, I mean, you, you just think of the person you want to, to reach through this prayer. But personally, I would like to ask you if you agree to send a prayer to Shefali, who has just been operated in Gwalior of a, a, brain, a brain situation, which is the result of an accident she had 20 years ago, has tortured her life. Torture and like she's an angel, she's a person full of light and inspiration to see, to observe. No words to say, uh, anyone would be crazy or angry. No, she's an angel, but she needs help. So when we pray like this, we want to see that that cosmic conscious energy that we are calling through us is projected towards what? We send places, people, situations. Here we want to send it. Here. We want to see that is entering her spiritual eye is flowing in her brain and resolving the physical issues, results of the accident, but especially when farther to the energetic origin which has caused the accident. Is it clear? So the words are. I tell you that we repeat it together. Divine Mother. Thou art omnipresent. Thou art in all thy children. Thou art in, in this case, Shefari. Manifest thy healing presence. Because with the word presence, we have everything there. We have the power, we have the awareness, we have the intelligence. We have Manifest thy healing presence in her body, mind, and soul. Then we will rub our hands together and we will feel that there is a new reawakened life force in us which is the extra cosmic conscious energy that we have called through our wheel of brain and we send it to her right so now you can repeat shefali you please put yourself in a receptive mode you shefali close your eyes open your arms like to receive we close our eyes or we can keep them open, however you prefer. Divine Mother, Divine Mother, Thou art omnipresent, Thou art omnipresent, Thou art in all thy children, Thou art in all thy children, Thou art in Shefali, Thou art in Shefali, Manifest thy healing presence, Manifest thy healing presence, In her body, In her body, In her mind, In her mind, in her soul, then we rub our hands together, like this, the palms of our hands. And you will feel you no know, heat, you will feel a, a tingling force, yes? And then you know, we send by pronouncing O, with the M, eh? O.
down their spine first on the arms and, and then on their chest and then on their heart, uh, breathing lungs and then on their stomach, intestines and then down till their feet, willing that energy to reach all the bones, the tissues, the nerves, all the molecules, all the cells, willing that power of home to destroy the disease cells and create new healthy cells. Slowly moving your hands up and down. This is supposed to go on for a longer time than what we have, so we rest our hands. Truly feeling ourselves absorbed in this healing presence, this beautiful healing presence of Divine Mother of God, willing to be conscious instruments of our peace and light and love wherever we go. Wherever we go in our mind, wherever we go in our heart, whatever we discover in our mind and heart, we just want to be a blessing for ourselves, reminding ourselves our only reality which is a reality of light and peace and joy and affirming it with faith that by affirming it so we become what we already are. So I leave you ending this class with this prayer that you can really remember what you and us really are and affirm it, demanding it, making it active with all the tools that we have shared and learned today.